Good day everyone, we are group 1, so before we start, um, let us pray in the name of the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Lord and Father of all, thank you for today, thank you for ways in which you provide for us all. For your protection and love, we thank you. Help us to focus our hearts and mind now on what we are about to do. Inspired by your Holy Spirit as we listen and write, Guide us by your eternal light as we discover more about the world around us. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, sir. Good morning, classmate. I am Eileen Nagkang and my report is about marketing strategies, primary approaches, and positioning. Marketing strategies. When we say marketing strategies, it is a company's overall game plan for contacting prospective consumers and turning them into customers of their products or services. In marketing strategy, there is a marketing plan. In marketing plan, it includes the value, proportion of the organization, important brand message, statistics on target consumer demographics, and other high-level aspects. A good marketing strategy can help you define clear, achievable, and quantifiable marketing goals for your organization. Because your marketing strategy affects how you operate your firm, it should, it should be designed and evolved in partnership with your employees. It is, it is a comprehensive and all-encompassing strategies communication tool that explains your company's products and services. Second, reflects the market position and function of your products and services. And the last one is a description of your consumers and competitors. A marketing strategy provides the general goals and vision for your marketing, as opposed to a marketing plan, which details the precise step you will take to put your marketing strategies into operational. Making the most of your marketing spend, remaining focused on your marketing, and monitoring and improving your sales success, may all be aided by developing a marketing strategy that incorporates the following components. Primary approaches. A core marketing strategy is a statement that communicates the key reason for a certain target market to purchase something. For further information on establishing a marketing plan, see how to establish a market analysis for your business plan. Under primary approaches, there is two types of target market a undifferentiated differentiated concentrated or specialized market b positioning statement target group of customers and need competitiveness environment benefit reasons for the claim or benefit brand personality or character proposed praise or slogan when we say positioning, it is the act of developing a company's offer and image so that it occupies a distinct and valuable place in the midst of its target consumers. Attribute, benefit, uses or application, user or positioning, rival, product, category, quality or price, cultural symbol are all examples of tactics. Most individuals will agree that image in the eyes of the target market is identical to positioning. It is the market's general view of a certain business, product, or service in relation to competitors in the same category. We have six process of brand positioning. First, identify your target market. Because knowing your target market and what they want will help you in making your marketing efforts more strategic. Two, learn about your competitors. You need to understand your competition so that you can set yourself apart from them. Three, conduct a SWOT analysis. Your strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats will help you narrow down your best selling points and any gaps you should be addressing. Four, Identify what makes your brand unique so that customers can easily remember your brand. 5. Create your brand positioning statement. It is a statement of how you want your brand to be perceived. 6. Define your brand identity, such as logo, color, design, and other components that identify and distinguish your brand in the mind of consumers. 
After that, we also have positioning concepts. There are three sort of positioning concepts. First, positions that are functional. Um, resolve issues, provide advantage to customers, obtain good opinions from investors and lenders via the stock profile. Two, positions of symbolic significance. Improve self-esteem, identifying one's ego, belonging and social significance, emotional satisfactions. And last, those with prior experience like upper sensory stimulation, provide intellectual stimulation, and that's all. I am Sharian Alborila and I will be discussing the market inclusion, market penetration, market dominance, market expansion, and product creation. Market inclusion, it entails selling more established items into existing markets, sometimes through expanded manufacturing, price reductions, or stronger marketing channels in digital marketing. Market penetration. It is a measure of how many people buy or use a product or ser service in comparison to the total theoretical market for that product or service. The number of sales or adoption can be an individual company's or industry sale. But the theoretical market can be the whole population of an estimate of the total prospective customers about a product. Market penetration is one of the four growth strategies identified by ANSOF in the product market group matrix. When a firm enters a market where existing products already exist, this is known as market penetration. The ACS approach to accomplish this is to acquire a piece of the market share of rivals' clients. Other methods include promotion to attract non-users of your product or persuade current clients to utilize more of your product or service. Ansof created the product market growth matrix to assist businesses in determining whether or not to enter the market. The following are the other three growth strategies in the productivity and commercialization improvement matrix. Second, product development. It is for current markets as well as new items such as McDonald's, which is always in the fast food business but often advertises new burgers. Third, market development. It is concerned with both new markets and current products. A good example is Lucozane, which was initially sold to ill children before being rebranded to attract athletes. Lastly, diversification. It refers to the introduction of new markets and goods. A notable example is Beyond Products. Market dominance. It is a measure of the popularity of a brand or sector. It is defined as the number of individuals who own mobile phones. Hence, the market penetration of cell phones is roughly 22%. This would imply that there are still 230 million more prospective mobile phone consumers, which might be a healthy indicator of growth for cell phone manufacturers. In general, the bigger the market penetration, the older the item or industry. Product creation. It entails creating new products or services and introducing them into current markets. Good day everyone, my name is Jasmine Fabia Gawin, I am from BSE 3C. My topic is all about diversification. Diversification is a strategy that mixes a wide variety of investment within a portfolio. Portfolio holdings can be diversified across asset classes and within classes, and also geographically by investing in both domestic and foreign markets. And diversification limits portfolio risk but can also mitigate performance at least in the short term. Next is diversification strategies of various type. In most circumstances, the final plan will be a combination of these options, available prospect as well as compatibility with the company's goal and resources. Determine this combination. It is classified into three types, circular, 
horizontal, and aggregate. Next is circular diversification. This indicates that the, is the, that the industry are technologically comparable, implying that the company can use its technical expertise to gain a competitive advantage. A company that creates industrial adhesives, for example, might decide to branch out into retail adhesives. The technology would stay the same, but the marketing strategy would need to change. It, it is also increasing its market share in order to release a new product that would help the company make money. Good morning, Sir Mlas. Good morning, classmates. I am Juliana Dora, and I'm going to discuss about diversification on the horizon, diversification of conglomerates, and new development of new products. Based on what I understand, diversification on the horizon is a growth strategy that involves entering into new market or industry one that your business doesn't operate in a while, also creating new product for the new market. For example, an ice cream basis adds a new types of confect confectionery into its product line. You may create new technology skills or marketing approach to diversity in this way. Diversification of conglomerates involves adding new products or services that are significantly unrelated and with new technological or commercial similarities. For example, if a computer company decided to produce notebooks, the company is pursuing a conglomerate diversification strategy. New product development is the process of bringing a new product to the marketplace. Your business may need to engage in this process due to change in customer preference, increasing competition and advance in technology or to capitalize on a new opportunity. That's all and thank you so much. Good day everyone. I'm Sherwin Ray Walayong. And I will discuss matrix of, of strategic alternatives for talks. Let's start to identifying strategy solution. Letter A is strength and opportunities. It is about how, can you, how you can use your strength to capitalize on opportunities. Letter B is the topic strengths and hazards. It is how to use your strength to avoid real and possible threats. Letter C is shortcoming and opportunities. It is about how you can use your opportunities to overcome your weakness. Letter D is weakness, weakness and threats. It is concerned when, with how to reduce your weakness, weaknesses while avoiding, avoiding threats. So, what is the definition of SWOT analysis? It is strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. Strength is, it is the strong areas that can overcome the weaknesses. Weakness, it is the firm that need to be improved in the future. Opportunity are the possible possibilities that exist in the external environment. Threats, it's a number of threats in the external environment open several possibilities for the company. So, what is exactly a TOS analysis? It is threats, weakness, opportunities, and strength. It has the same definition with SWOT analysis. But this time, threats, will be prioritized. Knowing, knowing threats is not bad at all. So, you can identify your threats or weakness first before you can see for opportunities and strengthen it. So, for me, it is better than SWOT analysis.
what is SWOT analysis? SWOT analysis is a framework for identifying and analyzing an organization's strengths, its weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Which is what makes up the SWOT acronym, the primary goal of SWOT analysis is to aid organizations in increasing awareness of the factors in making business decisions. SWOT accomplishes it this by analyzing the internal and external factors that can impact the viability of a decision. SWOT analysis is a commonly used by business entities, but it is also used by non-profit organization and also to lesser degree individuals for personal assessment. Additionally, it can be used to assess initiatives, products, or projects as an example. CIOs could use SWOT to help create a strategic planning template. A TOWS analysis is an extension of the SWOT analysis framework that identifies your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, threats, but then goes further looking to match strength and opportunities and the threats and weaknesses and threats with weaknesses. Adding the relationship between the internal and external factors makes TOWS a much more useful matrix than a standalone SWOT and obvious next step. The main purpose of TOWS analysis is to reduce threats, take advantage of, of opportunities, exploit strengths, and remove weaknesses. Good day. I'm Aranja Maria Adrina Galina. My topic today is all about Lesson 12, the Marketing Program Schedule and its Action Plans. Plans and Programs At this point, you must be translate your broad marketing ideas into precise plans and programs. Although these extensive plans contain all seven PS of the marketing mix, the emphasis may differ based on your organization individual goals. A product-orientated corporation who center its seven PS strategies around each of its goods, a geographical or commercial region, it will base its goods on the specific demands of it as well as the techniques adapted to meet those needs like brochures and websites are efficiently employed. The plan cannot be monitored even in terms of success in fulfilling its objectives unless these actions are described and idea quantified. These programs and activities will they represent the organization of marketing during the course of the time. As a result, the most essential practical output of the whole planning process is the specific marketing campaigns. These stages of planning, as a result, this design must be one is clear, clear, they should be a clear description of precisely what has to be done. Next is quantified, quantified is the projected consequence. Of each action should be quantified as much as possible so that its performance can be assessed. Next is focus. Focus the desire to expand operation beyond what can be reasonably managed should be avoided. And the last is upgrade. Those who will carry them out must be dedicated, dedicated to them and agree they are attainable. So the plans that arise will become a functional document that will guide the campaigns that take place within the company during the course of, of the plan. If the marketing strategy is to succeed, every exception to it must be questioned throughout the year and the lessons learned must be utilized in the next year. Mission vision. So mission mission. It is defines the company's business, its objectives, and its approach to reach those objectives. While the vision is described the desired future, 
future position of the company. Objectives. Objectives is define the focus of stu study. Next is uh, a marketing schedule and it most basic form may be anything that is used to man monitor the following projects and campaigns that your team will work on. It define your goals, your marketing strategies. It is a calendar of your key events and activities that need to be com completed or over the specific period of time. It is a great, it is a great for mapping out important dates and deadlines. So, so your team can easily see what needs to accomplish for the month. A branding action plan is is used by firms to establish and implement marketing strategies. The aim of developing marketing action plan is I plan is to your goals, strategies, and other plans in writing so that your company can stay stay on track and monitor progress while they execute marketing initiatives. My name is Genial F. Baligtas. I'm going to discuss the marketing programs, marketing schedule, and branding action plan. So what is marketing programs? Marketing program is the plan with respect to the various marketing activities taken by a company to increase sales. A marketing program is a coordinated and well-designed set of activities to achieve marketing objectives. Next, marketing schedule. In simplest terms, a marketing schedule can be anything that's used to track the following projects and campaigns your teamwork will work on. It is a group of individuals who are working on a shared project together with shared goals and objectives, which team members will be responsible for each one, the deadlines and ship dates for deliverables. And last, Branding Action Plan. In this plan, you will develop various aspects of your brand such as what are your goals, your message to be communicated, and the channels you plan to communicate on to reach your potential audience. Good morning everyone! My name is Jasmine Giacchino and I am here to discuss Lesson 3, The Marketing Budget and its Contingency Plan. First, let's define marketing budget. A marketing budget is an estimated amount of cost that will be required to promote your products or services. It's generally part of a marketing plan and crucial part of the marketing process. This budget is created to estimate the costs that are necessary for a growing a business. It includes all promotional costs like advertising, public relations, employing staff, office costs, and other expenses including for marketing. Now, there are pre-budgeting research that is beneficial to marketing budget. It is market and industry research. Knowledge of industry and market must be taken into account before developing budget. Internal records are useful in estimating costs by calculating ROI of previous spends. So some research is quite helpful in predicting marketing budget. These are the research tools that are helpful in marketing budget. First, research methodology. It is the function that connects the consumer, customer, and public to the marketer via data. Next is marketing research. It includes all the information needed to solve some challenges. It develops data collecting techniques oversees and performs the data gathering process and analyze convey the findings and their consequences that's all for lesson three marketing budget thank you good day everyone my name is chris and alejo and i will be discussing about the marketing research methodology so in this report, I will be giving you a systematic strategy that is used to collect marketing research. 
The first thing or the first step is to define the issue. Important notes, never undertake research for something you only want to know. You have to check or see if you truly need to know anything. In short, you have to be smart. Second, the problem is the focus of the investigation. In defining the issue, you have to create questions. For example, why are sales failing in Hong Kong? The second thing to know is to how will you get the data. Of course, you need to know is how will you get the data that you will need to address your problem. Do we need to conduct a telephone poll or a focus group? You also have to determine what is the sample technique to be used. Is it a random, stratified, or a clustered sample? The third one is to how will the researcher assess the information gathered? Fourth, you have to set a timetable and a budget. Fifth, return to the management or clients who requested the research. Why? Because you have to make certain that you both agree to the problem. Sixth is the data analysis should be carried out. Seventh, you have to check for mistakes, and this includes errors in samplings, errors in data gathering methods, and even errors in analysis faults. And then last but not the least, complete your final report. This section includes charts, tables, and diagrams that can help you express the findings of your study and ideally lead to a solution to your problem. That's all. Thank you. Good day everyone, my name is Janeline Bantan. Source of information. Primary research is conducted from the ground up. It is a unique and well researched in order to answer the challenge at hand. Primary sources is anything that gives you direct evidence about the people, events, or phenomena that you are researching. Primary sources that were produced at the time by participants or witnesses. It can be letters, photographs, physical objects. Primary resources will make new discoveries, provide your own original analysis, give direct evidence for your arguments. Secondary research, often known as desk research, already re exists since information was gathered from other reasons. Secondary sources is anything that describe interpretation evaluates or analyzes information from primary resources. The common example include books, articles, and documentaries that synthesize information on the topic, synopsis and description of artistic works, encyclopedias and textbooks that summarize information and ideas, reviews and essays that evaluate or interpret something. Good day everyone, I am Roberto Irganyosa Jr. Now I will be discussing the lesson 14 which is the firm's activity John chart. First, what is the John charts? John chart are a type of projects management tool that allows marketers to see project schedules, progress, and deliverables. Visual lines or bars clearly show which tasks have been finished and which are still to be performed allowing manager to distribute time and accountability appropriately. So before we proceed, let's see the example of John chart. John chart are useful for planning and scheduling projects. They help you assess how long a project should take, determine the resources needed, and plan the order in which you'll complete task. John chart are useful for monitoring a project progress when it's underway too. Why John chart is important? John chart are important for project planning and scheduling. They assist you with determining how long a project should take, determining the resources required, and planning the order in which activities will be completed. That will be all. Thank you.